Welcome to the Industry 4.0 Podcast with Grant Tech. Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Industry 4.0 Podcast with Grant Tech, where we take a look at the world of manufacturing with a focus on all those stories and trends that are going to lead us to better solutions. Uh, and our, t- our guests share a bunch of great tips and outcomes that are going to help improve productivity out at the plant floor and really just improve the business. Uh, my name is Sam Russell. I'm your host. I'm the Senior Director of Smart Manufacturing Solutions at Grand Tech. And today I am joined by uh, Saurabh Bal uh, of AWS. Saurabh has 22 plus years of IT and engineering services experience across a whole bunch of different industries, including retail, CPG, industrial and process manufacturing, uh, experience across delivery, sales leadership, solutions, customer relationship management, and managing $100 million plus portfolios and businesses. And again, currently on the AWS uh, manufacturing focused team. So uh, really great to have you here today. Absolutely. Great to be here, Sam. Thanks for having me. Great. Yeah. Um, well, again, the whole idea is we're here to talk about Industry 4.0, right? So let's make sure that we we start on a good page. Tell me what Industry 4.0 means to, to you and AWS and your and your take on it. I know that's a very good question because, you know, everybody looks at Industry 4.0 from a different lens. Um, and everybody has a different perspective on what Industry 4.0 means, you know, for any customer. Uh, the way I look at Industry 4.0 is is really helping our customers uh, transform themselves from being a traditional, manual, paper-based decision-making, which has been really a pretty long process and not a very accurate process and not real-time and <clears throat> a lot of laborious, is really transforming themselves into more of leveraging data to run their operations. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> What does it mean, right? I mean, you know, we talk about IoT, we talk about robotics, we talk about AI ML. At the end of it, what companies are trying to do is really leverage data to make, you know, business decisions in a much more real-time manner Mm -hmm. so that that their uh, plant managers and their plant operations folks can really leverage their time into doing much more innovative work which can really be innovative for that manufacturing company in terms of looking at new products, in terms of looking at time to market, and really leveraging technology and data, you know, to really run their plant operations. So that's what that's how I look at Industry Four Auto. Sure, and and one of the things that you uh, that you mentioned in there that I liked um, is that you linked a little bit of the idea of of taking things off of paper to the idea of real-time data. I feel like, you know, we're, we're a bunch of technology computer nerds, right? You know, we, we want to get rid of paper because paper's boring. We want to do two cool computer things, right? But it's not just for the sake of doing it. Like, there is so much benefit that you get besides just the idea that, you know, you might not be able to read it on paper. You might lose it if it's on paper. But also the idea that if you write it on paper, it needs to get seen, written down, stored somewhere, and then put somewhere else before it ever gets you, right? If we're doing all of this stuff on glass and in computer-based systems, that's what makes you get this data in real time. So absolutely critical. It's, we're not just getting rid of paper for fun, right? Yeah, and, and and it's all about leveraging technology to solve a business problem because mm-hmm. a, lot of, a lot of times customers get excited about leveraging, hey, let's do this POC and let's do an IoT POC. Well, uh, those POCs don't, get any, don't go anywhere if you don't have a business outcome attached to it. So it's very important for our customers to look at Industry 4.0 as a way to solve a business problem um, and then look at what technology makes sense for them rather than just looking at, hey, this customer is doing X, maybe I should do X. But no, you you don't have to do it. You don't, you should do something different, which is very important for your business. Absolutely. And, and in that vein, um, what are some of the business problems that you see Industry 4.0 solving the most? Like what are the real, real world use cases that you're seeing that are solving problems? <clears throat> well, I think the biggest problem right now, which I, I talk to the customers every day and 95% of our manufacturing customers still don't have their plants connected. Um, mm-hmm. And I think connectivity is a big issue. You can talk about all the fancy use cases, but unless your plants are connected, unless your machines are connected, unless you have the data to be able to really implement those use cases, you know, it's of no use. So I think the biggest challenge right now, which our customers are trying to solve is, hey, how do I solve my connectivity problem? How do I connect my plants? Some of these machines have been 40 years old. Some of these plants are in are in areas where you don't have a great cellular connectivity. And how do you bring that connectivity? How do you help solve that problem so that, you know, the customers can really then look at 
potential use cases on top of it. Yeah, I mean, um, I totally good answer. And I definitely believe I'm, I'm with you on that, right? Connectivity and getting the data that we need to do these industry 4.0 initiatives is, is such a challenge that I think so many customers are facing. Um, when it comes to the business value, though, again, it can sound like a little bit connectivity for connectivity's sake isn't really doing a lot for me, right? So kind of what are those other business challenges too? Once, once we get all this stuff connected, why are we doing it? What other problems are we solving? Yeah, I mean, again, right? I mean, uh, a typical problem for a customer is, hey, I can't, uh, you know, ship my products out because I have so much of demand, but I, I just can't have enough supply because, <clears throat> you know, I don't have the people. I don't have, you know, um, I don't have the people at the right time. And then really you have to start looking at using technology to solve some of those problems, to help solve some of your, uh, you know, orders, to help solve some of your quality problems, to help some of your uh, productivity problems. I think there are so many different problems you can solve mm-hmm. once you have better data. And again, it goes back to data. It also goes back to connectivity to be able to solve those problems. Yeah, totally. I, I, I'm with you on that. And also, I like the idea of like kind of bringing people into the equation too, right? I mean, it's Again, a lot of like automation manufacturing, we're kind of like seen as going and displacing jobs a lot of time, but really that's not the case. A lot of times we're kind of filling in roles that for jobs that people aren't going to get or, or really doesn't make sense for a person to do, right? Like the quality example you mentioned, right? The idea of like a, what an MES system would do as far as defining a quality test and then scheduling it for the right products and enforcing it and making sure that people do it and storing all of those results. Like, yeah, you could have a person responsible for all of that, but having the systems in place to really guide those people is, is what you want. You don't want to buy more supervisors to manage that type of work, right? And and, and the last thing I would say, Sam, is uh, with all the millennials now coming in, um, they are very tech savvy, right? And if you start having them do the same stuff what used to happen 40 years back, you can't motivate them to stay. They will leave. So yeah. you also need to think about how are you going to motivate the people who are now coming into the workforce because your folks who used to work before are all getting retired and the new form, new workforce is coming in and you need to really find a way to motivate those people so that they stay and they like the work. And that's where, you know, I think it's really becoming more of a necessity than a nice to have. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on that too. Good point. <laughs> Um, so, so you talk to a lot of, uh, manufacturing executives in, in your job and kind of listen to them for a lot of their problems. So, so when you were you're talking to kind of people at that executive level, what excites them about industry 4.0? Very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think more and more, I talk to the VP of supply chain and the VP of manufacturing. I think what excites them is really having, getting a single pane of view, a single pane of glass in terms of what's happening in my 50 different manufacturing plants globally. Today, again, it's a very manual process. Every plant is very unique. They don't have a standardized systems. Um, and there is no way for them to really get a view of, hey, how are my plants performing? Um, how, you know, how, how much pipeline of demand do I have? Uh, how does it look like from a supply perspective? A- am I going to meet my, uh, my commitments to my customers? Um, how are, you know, do I have enough inventory from a, from a supplier perspective, from a parts perspective, from a raw material perspective to really be able to cater to my demand? I think what excites our executives is really getting that view in a single pane of glass where they can look at the OEE, they can look at the quality, they can get demand, they can look at supply, they can see a view of all the suppliers, they can maybe also see which suppliers cannot meet the demand and hence maybe look at a different supplier to be able to meet that demand. Getting that full view is really helping our executives become really more educated to really run their manufacturing operations in a much more smarter manner. And that's really what is exciting them, what was not there before. Yeah, I I totally can back you up on that. I had a call earlier just today about exactly that topic, about these kind of control towers, these single panes of glass that we could be using to help kind of summarize a lot of that information. Um, So so tell me, so we're we're getting all of this, we're being able to present it to the executives and kind of those uh, industry leaders. How does that translate kind of down to the plant level? What does the plant manager get out of those types of single panes of glass and industry 4.0? Uh, initiatives. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example. I was actually uh, with a plant manager a couple of weeks back in Dallas, and I was doing a tour of their plant, and 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 they are into fabrication. They are an assembly plant, and what he talked about is that sort of number one problem I have today is really being able to manage safety for my employees. Mm. Uh, I want my employees to feel safe when they come to a plant. I don't want them to face any accidents. 
And today, uh, my safety engineer has to do a tour 10 different times in a day to make sure that all the safety guidelines are being adhered, mm -hmm. that people are not going to places where they're supposed to go, they're not supposed to go, um, they're using the equipment properly, and it's really a very manual process. And, and what now they're looking at is really, again, having that technology solution, having that IoT solution, having that computer vision solution, which can really help them automate some of that. And that is what is exciting a plant manager, right? Saying, hey, I don't want, and if, if for some reason my safety engineer does not show up in a day because he or she is not sick or he's sick and he's not feeling well, um, you know, that whole thing goes for a toss. And I don't want to be dependent on people when it comes to safety. I would rather depend on technology. And, and sitting in my office, I should be able to see, you know, how are the safety guidelines getting met and on a real-time manner. And maybe I go wherever it's required, but not go and take a tour of the plant 10 different times in a day. That's not effective. That's not sustainable. And, and that these are the kind of examples what are really motivating our plant managers to adopt more and more of technology, yeah. whether it is safety, whether it is quality, whether it is looking at, you know, you know, today my two shift engineer did not show up. What do I do? Well, it would be great if I had technology to automate some of those tasks so that I was less dependent on people. And that is what is really exciting there. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that connection too. And, and I do, I think that so much when we think about Industry 4.0 and these digital technologies, we're thinking about reducing OPEX, right? Or, or getting into some new market. But something like safety, like there is such a huge opportunity there to apply technology to keep people that are still doing the work that needs to get done by those people done in a safer way. I, I think that's a great example. Um, so, so shifting a little bit, um, what big challenges do you think that manufacturers are going to run into in the next five years that could prevent them from getting to their digital transformation objectives or could get solved by successful transformation objectives? Yeah, um, I would say two things, right? One, <clears throat> um, it's not just about technology. It's, uh, you know, these transformations really need to be managed from a change management perspective as well. And I think I think the customers who are able to bring people, process, and technology together to do these transformations are very successful. Because at the end of it, you can have a great technology, but if those technologies are not adopted by your plant managers and your OT engineers on the shop floor, it's not going to work. They're not going to use it. They're going to just rip and replace. So... I think the most important aspect of this transformation is going to be how are customers implementing change management? How are they bringing in more and more people into the mix in terms of training, in terms of enablement, in terms of adoption, so that these solutions also get adopted and not just POC sitting somewhere which nobody's using it. Mm -hmm. So that is number one. Number two, I think I do see the labor problem not going away in the next five years as well. I think it's only going to increase. And even if people will be available, they will be super expensive. So it's, it's, it's a question. It's going to be, well, people are available, but we can't afford them because it's just so expensive. So uh, I think it's going to be more and more technologies getting adopted on the shop floor over the next five years. I do see with pandemic coming in and the labor problem coming in and the supply chains getting disrupted, I think more and more customers have now realized that if they don't do transformations now, they will be struggling to run their business two, three years from now. Mm -hmm. And hence, they are now seriously looking at doing digital transformation. And again, for every customer, that means different thing. It's not a standard answer for every, for every customer. It all boils down to looking at what is the problem today you are getting impacted. You know, are you getting impacted because you are shipping products with high quality of defects, so then maybe you need a different solution. Or you are having safety problems and then you're looking at a safety solution. Or, you know, is it is it to do with, you know, really your downtime in a plant and maybe you need a different solution for that. So I think it's going to be a mix of the digital transformations more and more getting implemented, but also how do you do it is going to be a, play a key role in terms of are those transformations really getting successfully adopted by your plant managers? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great answer too. And I'll, I'll tell a little story from, again, like some conversations I had just earlier today, right? So around that control, I think control tower is a really good example of where you need to think about not just the technology, but also your people and your process. So in case some of our listeners aren't aware, when I'm saying control tower, right, this is this concept where, um, think of it like an air traffic control tower, right? Where um, I might 
on my manufacturing lines have a lot of different screens and systems to control individual lines or pieces of equipment. But do I have one kind of area or one screen, one system where I can look at everything that happens at a plant from a single location or even bigger picture? Do I have a place uh, in corporate or something like that where I can see what's going on at all of my individual plants, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I say control tower. And we talk about kind of the technology. The technology is definitely there. We can exchange all of this data. We can get things into a single pane of glass. That's not the challenge. The challenge is more thinking about what the people that are watching these screens are going to be able to do and how they're going to do it, right? Do you really want somebody at corporate being able to turn on or off a production line? Well, if you are going to give that person that permission, you need processes in place to make sure that everything on that line is safe and in a good position before they start touching things that they can't see and things like that, right? So, yeah, the technology, there's there's a lot that you can do, but making yep. sure that you have the people trained, doing the right things, the right processes in place so that you're actually using that effectively can, can be a challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's, it's I think, uh, I, I do think, you know, this is a great opportunity for our manufacturing companies to transform themselves. Uh, yeah. You know, again, uh, technology is affordable, which was not the case five years back. Technology was available. Sensors were available five years back, but they were not affordable. Today they are. Yeah. So I think it's a question of affordability. It's a question of labor market being so expensive. It's a question of, you know, every customer wanted to fix their supply chains because it's all disrupted. Um, because of pandemic, I think all of these different reasons are really going to help accelerate our customers on this journey. Yeah, totally. Um, so, so another question, right? So, I we, one of the nice things about having you here from from AWS is I think that most of our our listeners know what AWS is, right? You're this huge uh, industry. You guys do all sorts of stuff. Manufacturing is just a part of what you do. Um, maybe can you give me an example of somewhere or like kind of an industry that you think maybe hasn't realized that AWS has this manufacturing strength behind you and some problems that you're you're ready to solve and you're just waiting, waiting for the right contact to solve it, you know? Uh, I mean, I would say an industry which can really leverage uh, AWS and I, whenever I travel, I think about it is our airline industry. Oh, that makes sense because you're traveling, yeah. <laughs> You know, with all your, um, you know, flights getting delayed because of last minute maintenance issues, which happen when you are already boarded, sitting on a plane, just getting ready to get out. But then the the captain says, well, sorry, we have a maintenance issue and we can't go for two hours. So, you know, I think this is one industry which can leverage, you know, uh, the the benefits which our manufacturing companies are adopting from preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance and leveraging cloud and leveraging data to really help, you know, bring in more predictability into these kind of issues because maintenance issues did not just happen now. I'm sure the maintenance issue was there, but somebody just found it out just now. So, so I think being able to manage an entire process can really help airline industry give a much better customer experience to their customers and hopefully avoid these delays which happen mm -hmm. because of maintenance issues, which I believe are avoidable. Yeah, right. I, 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 I like to think that it's not just the the engineer in me where every time I get on a plane and they say like, oh, we're having a problem due to maintenance. I'm like, how did you not know that? Like, I, I think that that's, <laughs> that, exactly. that's a universal emotion. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. And then it takes, and then it takes one hour for a maintenance guy to show up. And I'm like, Again, there is so much technology available. Can't you use virtual reality? Can't you use augmented reality? Can you guys do some remote troubleshooting? There is so much of stuff available. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, one industry which can benefit a lot is definitely a land industry. Yeah, exactly. Or even, you know, it's, it's winter time and therefore I'm more likely to have this style of fa uh, failure. Therefore, I staff up on maintenance to try to deal with exactly. it. Right? We exactly. We do that with plants all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, great. So, so we're getting towards the end. Kind of two things we like to kind of wrap up on is that we. Um, my next question to you, the one after this, will be around what questions you have for other people around Industry 4.0. When I asked somebody about this before, they had this question that they wanted me to ask a future guest. Um, they were curious about hiring the right people, right? So, as manufacturing leaders are bringing more kind of excitement into this field. How do we kind of find and inspire the right people, probably younger people, to kind of like take that education and learn to kind of go into manufacturing and to see that there is cool technology and engineering problems to solve here? Do you have any thoughts about how we kind of start to inspire and train that generation of, of future manufacturing leaders? Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said before, more and more 
technology we can adopt on the shop floor and more and more and again don't adopt it for the sake of it but adopt it to solve a business problem um and and more and more uh, you know automation the customers can bring in uh, can really help attract the talent I, I, i'll give you an example uh, of course i can't name a customer but they are a very large uh, you know industrial manufacturing company and they are trying to transform themselves by saying hey we are not just a manufacturing company we are a technology company and just with that transformation they are opening uh, their uh, office in in downtown chicago uh, they are able to attract so much of talent because they are playing you know again they are one of our aws customer they are doing some cool stuff on the shop floor with iot with ai with machine learning with robotics uh, with 5g and and that's really helping them attract the best and the best talent because again they want people to come and work on this cool technology and not just work on a manufacturing shop floor which is still running what it used to run 40 years back so i think more and more the customers can do that adopt technology can really help them attract the millennials because these days millennials have an iphone the day they are born <laughs> they play phones they play with gadgets mm-hmm. that's what they like to do and uh, if you give them some cool projects around some of the ai ml and robotics and machine learning i'm sure uh, the companies can attract one of the best talents in the market Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. And I think it's now is a really good time to be emphasizing this message too, right? I mean, we're seeing a little bit of shakiness kind of in some of those bigger tech kind of, of companies. Um, and I do think that's been kind of a big appeal for a lot of young engineers. They must go to some app developer, you know, making the new hot thing, when really a lot of your customers for that are these manufacturers. And there are so many cool applications of AI and computer vision and machine learning and things like that that um yeah i mean manufacturing is where a lot of these cool technologies are combining it's a great place to go yeah and i can tell you the customers who are really being successful in these transformations um are the customers who really re- have realized that uh that they need to invest on people and for them to invest on people is they have to motivate them and the way to motivate them is to really leverage some of these latest technologies available. So and I'm seeing those customers being more and more successful. Yeah, great. Um well, hey, before we go, um do you have any questions that you want me to ask to to a future guest about Industry 4.0? No, I mean, I think uh, this has been a good discussion, Sam. Uh definitely something which I think about every day is the whole change, the change management piece. Um I think I would be very you know eager to understand how some of the other customers are solving that change management problem mm-hmm. uh because that really leads to bringing an entire organization together it's not just you're not just talking to manufacturing folks and you're talking to IT you're talking to you know finance you're talking to HR everybody has to come together uh, to solve that change management problem and i would be curious to understand how some of the other companies are doing that and what are some of those best practices mm. which others can adopt from Yeah, and you're talking about people like beyond just kind of the people that do the specific technology thing, but kind of all the other people around that and the systems around that that enable the whole system. I'm I think it's a great question. Exactly. Exactly. Great. Well, Sarv, thank you so much for being able to join the podcast. This is such a great discussion. Um is oh, before we break away, just is there anything that's going on in AWS in particular that you want to point people to that they're uh, listening and interested? Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of our our friends look at aws and think about aws as an infrastructure company well we are much more than an infrastructure company uh, we are a company who really believe in innovating for our customers um and uh, two years back we launched what is called aws for industrials which really you know talks about the different services and different products we have to offer for our manufacturing and industrial customers So I would request people to go online and and read more about AWS for industrials. I think that would give a good perspective yeah. in terms of what AWS is doing for in the manufacturing space. And and feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer any questions or you know make sure uh, you know folks really understand how AWS can help uh, so that you know don't look at just us as an infrastructure company. But you know I think we. we really want to be that innovation arm for our customers and help them innovate in their digital transformation journey. Yeah, I mean I, and I could personally advocate for a lot of that material too. I know I was kind of helping to review some of it as you all were putting it together. Um I mean one of the things that I think is really great about it is that if you are a 
more IT or more infrastructure professional that is curious about what kind of how to apply that to industry and manufacturing. There's a lot of good like manufacturing 101 content kind of in the a lot of the AWS training and how to apply that AWS technology to manufacturing. So I, I, I totally agree with you. There's a lot of great resources that you all have provided to, to help upskill all sorts of people that might be curious. Yep. And we have and we have immersion days available. We have enablement sessions available. We have yep. trainings available. So all kind of stuff is available for our customers, for our partners to really take benefit from and, you know, learn more about what AWS is doing. Yeah, great. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks again, Saurabh. And thank you, everybody, for for listening to the podcast. Uh, Remember that we would love to hear from you. Saurabh said it again. If you have questions about AWS, you could reach out directly to him. So go check him out on LinkedIn and stuff like that if you have any questions. Um, just like that, follow Grant Tech on LinkedIn to stay up to date with everything that we're doing. Subscribe to this Industry 4.0 podcast with Grant Tech for wherever you get your podcast. Um, and then you can always email any questions, any feedback, or your thoughts on Industry 4.0 to info at grantech.com. And please do join us next time for the Industry 4.0 podcast with Grant Tech. Thanks again, Sarah. Really great to have you today. Thank you, Sam. Have a nice, uh, nice day. Take care. Thanks.